Thank you all for joining in on a Saturday afternoon. So today's topic, uh, I would be taking on the auto industry. Uh, so it's just a couple of uh, uh, good slides that I have, good data points that I have, uh, where you know we look at how uh, what happened to the auto industry, and now uh, what are we looking at? Is there a good opportunity that that can arise on the auto sector? So what are we going to look at? Uh, we are going to look at a blast from the past. We are going to look at uh, what the scenario was in 2019. Uh, we had a very uh, a bad slowdown in 2019 uh, in the auto sector. You saw demand uh, coming down. You saw a lot of changes taking place that year. There were a lot of supply chain disruptions. The industry has had supply chain disruptions since 2019. Uh, if you saw that there was a, a chip slowdown, the, the supplies were not coming in, and uh, that affected the auto industry. Uh, I just did a semi. Uh, I just did a, a webinar, uh, you know, an hour back on on semiconductors, uh, and they use uh, uh, mesh on nodes, which are bas basically you would have heard five nanometer, nanometer, but they they use uh, mesh on nodes, which are more uh, which are more than 20, 25 uh, nanometer size. Right. Then there were a lot of regulatory changes. You saw the accident norm, norms coming in. You saw a new safety norms. You're seeing that the airbags were mandatory and now, uh, you know, it's, it's more like any player can uh, sort of decide how many airbags they want. So the industry went through a lot of uh, changes. There was PS6 also that came in. Uh, uh, then fuel prices uh, really drive decisions. Right. So right now we are in a place where crude is beyond uh, $80 and you're seeing how uh, petrol prices are actually affecting your wallet. Right? Uh, so these are things that have affected the auto industry. These are things that uh, that will continue to sort of have an impact on our decision to uh, buy a vehicle. And that's why you're having more EVs coming in now. Uh, the most important thing is infrastructure spending. So the government has uh, spent uh, on infrastructure, what they were supposed to spend in the last 10 years, they support they burn out and stars. Uh, they spent it in, in one year. Right? So 10 lakh crores. And uh, there is a good outlay given to roads. And, uh, and and as roads keep getting better, you would have a very good experience with your car and cars will start keep getting better. Right? Be it EV or be it uh, IC. Right? So you would have, the, so when the government does go out and start spending, when you're having more connectivity, uh, more logistics can take place. Uh, a lot of things can take place that can benefit this industry. Sorry, I'll just go on to the next slide. So, uh, last thing. Off. If you look at traffic, traffic has been on the rise. Uh, even here, uh, what used to take me 20 minutes is now taking me 50 minutes, right? But the point, if you look at EVA bill generation, uh, we, it is continuously increasing. If you see uh, in 2019, we were somewhere below uh, uh, 2 million units as daily run rate, and now we are seeing somewhere around 3 million. It's a three time increase almost or two and a half time increase. So traffic is on the rise and, and this is a good indicator of more cars. This is a good indicator of how our road, how our roads are doing really well. Right? In connectivity has played a huge role uh, in uh, more vehicles coming in on the road. And the data is very, very clear. You're seeing more eBay uh, bill generations. You're seeing uh, the daily rate is, is going on. Right? Now, make in China has uh, becoming it, it is becoming now make in India. So if you see uh, the size of the China's automotive market itself uh, is six times that of uh, the automotive industry in India. Right. So we have a long, long, long runway from growth. Even if a small part goes from China, all the way up in India. Though China is leading now uh, in terms of EV manufacturing, uh, but on the auto actually side, definitely we are trying to build a market leadership position with the world. So. Make in India is now a very, very big trend. It's now not only make in India, it's now make for the world. Right. Now, outside of China, India is the only lowest cost uh, or, or low cost automotive market with large operating scale and high localization, which means that everything is indigenous. Right? We use our own parts. Uh, we create our own parts. Uh, we are supplying to uh, Indian automotive uh, as well as global automotive, but everything is in-house. Right? Everything is more domestic. Right? 
right? So if you look at how localization is in India, it's about 80 to 90 percent, which is much more higher than its uh, Asian peers, right? So if you look at Vietnam, Vietnam is only 10 percent, and and Indonesia and Thailand are somewhere around 80 percent. So that's why when you hear uh, in the news emerging nations like Indonesia uh, are leading the forefront. Uh, in in terms of e-commerce, then you know that there's a very big player that is uh, uh, involved uh, in a big riding fleet, right? So uh, localization in India is the, the number is extremely high, right? So again, this is why I was saying you make in India is now suddenly going to become make for the world, right? Now unlocking themes, uh, bigger, better, faster, uh, in with the new and out with the old, where the smart money was. And what risk do we see? So these are things that we will start addressing. The big is only getting bigger. They're getting better. They're getting faster. Uh, uh, there is some good data that I I got on how uh, uh, the average age of our vehicle is pretty high, and now we would go into the cycle of replacing that uh, that vehicle or replacing uh, uh, that particular part. Uh, where's the money really going? Uh, are investors really that smart? And what are the risks that we foresee in this particular industry? Right, let's look at the first trend. Uh, now we are going into more SUV sales. In, in 2014, uh, sorry, in 2012, you saw SUV sales being about 14% of the entire industry, and now it's about 50%. So anytime you say, I'm going to go buy a car, uh, I'm going to go buy Kia Seltos, I'm going to buy, go buy a Hyundai Greta, I want SUV, right? And most of it does come with more power, uh, right? They are uh, much more better, they are much more efficient. Uh, than their uh, previous models, and uh, this trend uh, is is a very big trend because you're seeing invest because you're seeing uh, the consumer mentality shift from a smaller vehicle to the bigger vehicle, which means the aspirations are are, are really big. Right? And now we are having vehicles that are going green also. So EV, the acceptance of EV though is it is still uh, very nascent. It's still starting, but we are seeing that uh, a good amount of uh, uh, people do have uh, EVs now. How many new SUVs were launched this year? Let's take a poll. Uh, three, five, seven. Uh, put in your uh, answers in in the chat box. So we have one on seven. We have one on five. Okay, one on no idea, that's good. Again, there's seven. There's five. Okay, so we are neck to neck. I think the last one uh, would be the decider. Seven only. All the companies are focusing now. I see. So yes, uh, seven is right. Uh, we've had uh, new models coming from Maruti. We've had uh, coming from uh, Citroen. We have something coming from Hyundai. So yes, seven is is the right answer. Right. Seven new SUVs were launched this year. Right. Uh, these are uh, the seven. Uh, uh, that are coming, so I put in five of them. And uh, uh, if if you look at it, uh, I mean it's very simple, right? We are we are going to go in and start seeing more demand for these vehicles coming in, right? So this is the Dilmangi movement, right? So the share of scooters and premium bikes are on the rise. Uh, so something on two wheeler. So we were more sub 125 cc, uh, and now we are going into more uh, 125 cc. Right. We are going into more uh, premium bikes. Uh, uh, if you look at Bajaj, Bajaj is now tied up to Triumph, though it's not on the domestic side. But yes, uh, mentality of consumer is that yes, we want to have a premium bike as well. And you are seeing a lot of players tying up with the global leaders to manufacture these bikes in India. So from the share of uh, sub 125cc motorcycles in in FI30, uh, it was about. 60% and now the demand profile has, has, has come down to about 50%, right? And that has again gone into uh, 
premium scooters has gone into EVs, have gone into uh, 1.5 plus CC motorcycles, right? So we are asking for more. We are getting more and more aspirational. Okay. So do you know anybody who has bought an EV car this year? Again, a poll. That's a yes. That's a yes again. Okay, there's one more yes. So a lot of you are telling yes. Very interesting. The 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 uh, the last time I did uh, this this webinar, uh, there were many answers on no. Right. So it's still mixed, right? People are accepting, people are not accepting. You are still in the nation's, uh, nascent stages of uh, EV, though uh, uh, people are committing to this uh, model. Uh, people do like this model. And over time, you would see the benefits of it coming in. More infrastructure would come in, more charging stations would come in. We would have standard uh, charging ports. We would have standard, uh, everything would become standardized. And you would see the acceptance of EV starting to go up. There would be a mix of everything. There would be some people not wanting to go for EV. There'd still be someone wanting to go for. There would not be a hundred percent replacement. Right? People would still go for uh, either one of these options, and these options would be there. Right? So going green, let's, let's look at some numbers. Uh, so the EV market share in global uh, sales of vehicles uh, has also been rising. Right? Though it is small, it has been rising. It is now eighteen uh, percent of the entire. Uh, uh, volumes uh, globally, right? So globally, also we are uh, doing very well. You are seeing uh, Tesla and BYD uh, leading the entire pack, uh, and you are seeing good demand also from the global side, right? So let's look at India. India is still very nascent. India's market share in two wheeler has uh, and three wheeler has been uh, very good. Uh, so we are still uh, very very small. We are still just starting out. Right. If you see 18, 19, 20, 21, there were many numbers. Only from 22, we started to see big numbers starting to come in. Right. Uh, we've had a good share in the EV three wheeler side, it's about 50%. But uh, four wheeler, e buses, and two wheeler, we have a long, long runway to go. Uh, this is the next trend out with the old, into the new. Now, if you look at uh, Vinod Agarwal, it's a very uh, uh, famous CEO. The biggest growth driver is replacements. This is what I was talking to you about how we are going to go out and start start, start replacing our old vehicle. Right? Because during this two and a half years of recession, replacements have not happened because sentiments were down. Those replacements are happening in the current year and will continue into the next year. Apart from the pent up demand for replacements, the regular replacements which have to happen this for this year and next year will also happen. So he's quite bullish on uh, replacements and so are we. So I will show you the data of uh, what uh, we have to look for in, in terms of replacements. Now, when was the last time you bought a car? Was it uh, before 2019? Was it between 2019 and 2020? Was it after 21? Another poll. Actually, even I would like to participate in this poll. Uh, my answer would be somewhere uh, So we have mixed answers. The one there are a couple of uh, people telling after 21. Uh, there's someone telling 2019 to 21. There's somebody at 2005. So you're going to drive demand then, if it's, it's 2005. Right. Uh, there is so a lot of uh, between 2019 to 21. But you also see that there are a lot of people who have cars that are 
uh, that have bought wave uh, in 2013, 14, that are old models that are before 2019. Okay. Uh, so from recession to replacement. So if you look at this number, right, this number is, is going to increase. So if you see the PV industry volumes, uh, you see that lull of uh, 14, 15, 16, and then you saw good growth, and then you saw a deep fall. Right? But we are expecting that, uh, yes, this, this number uh, would go up. It is sustainable, and you would see good growth coming in. Right? Now, if you look at the uh, age of the vehicle, you're seeing now in the last three, four years, the age of the entire, uh, the age of vehicles on the road has gone up significantly to five years plus. Hey, the average age is around four and a half years, uh, but you are seeing that it, it has uh, significantly gone up, right? which means that there is a good chance of uh, people going back saying, I'm going, I'm going to buy a new car, I want to buy a new bike, and uh, you would see new demand coming in. Now, uh, let's put your money where your mouth is. Now, banks and auto have like the incremental profits, while global cycle and but global cyclical and cements have sort of drag profit. So if you look at apart from banks, right, banks is a major chunk of our entire index, right. But apart from that, auto is the only sector that stands out in terms of contribution towards Nifty's profit. Right? And this is Motilal. This data is have taken from uh, Motilal Oswal's report. So uh, the numbers are good, right. So barring banks, because it's a major part of the index, this is one sector that has. Uh, contributed very well. The other heavyweight sector that comes in is technology, but you don't see technology anywhere in the top top three. It comes somewhere in, in, in top five or top four. So this is a sector that is uh, leading incremental profits uh, despite the other sectors having a very, very big drag. Now, in terms of the auto sector's overall contribution, uh, uh, in terms of their own profit pool, uh, uh, their profit pools also have gone up. So the contribution that is coming in is also going up. Right? Uh, we were at uh, very low levels in the last two, three years, and now that level is starting to go up. So you are seeing that uh, profits are coming in, the pool is getting bigger, and with, de with the demand going up, as well as new supplies coming in, you would see this profit pool increasing. Now, what are the risks that we see? Now, uh, this is an El Nino year. Uh, rains have been is extremely scattered. Uh, so there is a chance where we have weak rural demand. You're already seeing uh, the numbers for FMCG players coming in. Uh, big ticket items are doing well, small ticket items are not doing really well. But the point is uh, that anytime there is a scenario of uh, El Nino or weather change or anything that can come up like that, there is, uh, there is a risk for uh, rural demand to be very weak. Right. High energy prices. So we are in a very tricky environment globally. We are seeing uh, energy prices going through the roof. This is not affecting us, but this is affecting developed nations. And uh, we, if we want to become make for the world, definitely we have to uh, uh, support uh, global nations. And we would have that problem if uh, the demand goes or uh, demand starts flattering uh, on the global side. Right. So high energy prices does become a very big problem. You're seeing oil very, very sticky above $80. So yes, this is a problem. Uh, global deceleration. If uh, if there is a recession that comes up, if there is a slowdown that comes up. Right? So you're already seeing uh, Europe having very, very bad growth. Uh, in fact, they have not even come up from global financial crisis. You are seeing uh, uh, Polarization in the US uh, growth only comes from particular industry that nobody else is really uh, uh, contributing to that growth. So yes, if interest rates do remain sticky and energy prices do remain sticky, which means inflation remains sticky, which it is proving out to be, then definitely there can be a scenario where there is a slowdown. And when the slowdown comes, we don't know how it is going to affect this particular industry. Obviously, it will affect all industries, but uh, it, it, we don't know how it would affect this particular industry. So definitely that, that risk is there of uh, a global deceleration affecting this particular industry. Now, uh, let's take some questions. So uh, I will I will open the floor for questions.
So whatever questions you have about the industry, please do put it in uh, the chat box and I'll do my best to address it. Okay, so there is a question on should we buy the auto sector heavily? Is it the right time to enter auto stops? See, the reason why I, I I chose this particular topic is because see on my stones to wealth, um, <clears throat> like I said, we wanted to do more of a large scale approach, and I and uh, you're seeing a lot of content coming out, and, and uh, we are doing more webinars on particular sectors. We are doing more webinars on uh, uh, particular ideas that we look at, and. Uh, the best way for you to look at auto as an industry is to look at uh, the entire pack. It's not to look at one particular stock or one brand name. Mutual funds is the best route for you to uh, generate wealth. It's, for you. it's the best way because you're you're not choosing one particular thing. You're getting PV. You're you're getting four wheeler. You're getting two wheeler. Uh, then you will get uh, people from the logistic side also who would benefit from growth that is coming up in the auto sector. Right. So having a basket approach always works and mutual funds is the best way for anybody in, in the market to uh, uh, invest. See, if you look even now, right, uh, we are reaching all time high SIPs. So 16,000 crores is, is the SIP. So uh, it works. Uh, it has generated wealth for years on together and this is the best way for you to do. Why do you want to uh, break your head on in one particular stock and then something happens and it's very volatile and then again you have stress and anxiety so you should not choose that the best way for you to look at this particular sector and it's a sector so you should look at it from a basket approach and the best way for you to do is via SIP it has nothing to do with uh, uh, STP or uh, lump sum only when there's a deep or uh, when there's a broad based uh, correction that comes in the market when you, you can look at a lump sum but the best way for you to look at this sector is 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 a basket approach uh how far are we in battery swapping and standardizing uh, standardizing it this is a very good question it's a very very good question because you are seeing players like Aether coming in and uh first it's not about swapping first you have to get the battery right right and Aether has done a fantastic job in getting the battery right they have set the industry standard so if you look at how it's being tested also uh it, it's called the pin test uh you put the pin if it was then it's not your not that not that cup of but it if it it, it goes through uh, stringent testing process right so uh, standardizing battery yes definitely second uh, see just take a simple concept uh, android phone versus apple phones right uh, android phones went from micro sd to usb c yeah usb c and then usb c started getting accepted in every uh, a product that was coming in, be it a laptop, be it uh, uh, your uh, your phones, anything, everything started to come in USB C. So there was good uh, interoperability that you can use, right? So then Apple came out with something Lightning, and it was very, I'm an Apple user, very irritating to in fact to shift from one thing to the other, and I I can't use that chart that wire again. So now products are coming up with more. Uh, uh, USB C, so it's become a standard, right? So the next stage is to have a standard, uh, standard charging ports, uh, standard infrastructure. Uh, if I if I'm having a Tata EV and I go to a particular, if I'm stuck somewhere, I I should be able to go to any charging point. It should not be a Tata charging point or their particular thing. It should be anything, right? So that's how they are doing it now. There's ACDC, right? So standardization, is, uh, that part of standardizing is happening. Okay. Then in terms of swapping. Uh, see, that is a separate uh, technology. Uh, this technology is working in uh, other Asian countries. Uh, there are market leaders that are having this sort of uh, uh, use of technology uh, where you can go and swap and, and come out. So swapping is still not uh, taken off yet in India. There are people trying to commit to it. You are having battery as a service. You are having, you are having hardware as a service coming up to be. But uh, standardizing is happening. So we are far in terms of swapping. Now, I would not say far also. I would say that uh, we are developing slow, but it's happening. 
whereas the other parts yes definitely we are uh, we are we are at a very good pace auto banks are they or auto stocks are preferable both and that's why i told you it's not about the stock it's about if you're getting everything in one basket please take the basket in the future ev run uh, sorry in the future ev and hydrogen vehicle will run please share both will both will run there are players global player right toyota is very big they are committing to uh, hybrid vehicles and we don't know what is going to come out whether it is going to be hydrogen vehicle or it's going to be uh, ethanol vehicle still it's nascent but every like i said uh, there would be use cases for each and every technology that comes in i would prefer ev i would be able to prefer ethanol vehicles i would be able to do a hybrid uh, it can be hydrogen it can be anything but there would be use cases nothing will uh, yes there will be new use cases there will be new use that come in people will shift from one thing to another but uh, it, it i do not think that it would die away 100% would not go from one thing to the other thing okay how is the ev market dominating in the future and what are the frequency of growth rate see uh, we don't know how evs are going to grow like i said the numbers that have come in you did not see any numbers coming in from uh, uh, 17 18 and 19 right you started seeing numbers only coming in from 20 right so we are still very very uh, nascent uh, it's still uh, it's very young so you don't know what a young person is going to look like when they are an adult it's the same case so who will dominate no we don't know who's going to dominate there can be players where three four people come in everybody has sort of dominated so if you see even in two wheelers there are three four players right they are all getting market share they all have market share in particular products in particular segments of the market so that can arise even in pv even in pv you're seeing uh, there are market leaders for uh, small vehicles and there are market leaders for larger vehicles so just like that Uh, we, typically, we typically invest when there is uncertainty. Currently, we can observe clear numbers in both. How can we participate and benefit from this trend? Over the past years, all auto stocks have risen at least 25%. Do you believe that there is still value in the sector? And do you expect it to perform well at least the next three, four years? Okay. Uh, one, uh, I want to know over the past year. So this is only one year return, right? But when we look at investing, we should not look at one year. We should look at the entire cycle. So the last peak was somewhere in... Uh, uh, around 14, 15, 16, and 17. But after that, you saw 19 was a very bad year. It was a very, very bad year for the auto auto sector. Right? And when players go through this sort of cycle, they make changes. It, it, uh, they become resilient after that. Yet when they go through a very bad lull, uh, there are many uh, changes that came in from a regulation standpoint. Right? And regulation standpoint means you have to go back to the drawing board and come up with uh, products that are well regulated. You have you had the uh, new uh, norms that came in for safety and in terms of action norms. Plus you had BS six coming in. There was a big transition. So when an industry goes through such transitions, it uh, uh, after that it does become resilient and then demand starts to support. Right now we are in the place where uncertainty is coming in from a point of uh, global scenario. So that's where the uncertainty lies. Here in India. Uh, we are very well poised to grow. It's the only country that is offering you 7% sort of GDP growth. Right. So definitely, yes, there, there is a good value in the sector for you, for any investor to look at. Uh, but it's not just seeing right? how do you invest in these particular sectors. And we have spoken multiple times that this year is not a year where uh, you should take extreme risk. Right. Uh, if you see how we we uh, if you see our content also, right? we've always said that, uh, you know, in a conservative style, you're still able to make very high returns, right? And conservative doesn't mean I'm only going to do, uh, you know, large caps or small caps or mid cap, or not as aggressive mean I'm only do small caps, that uh, every market context is different, right? So it, it's not just about looking at the sector, it's about how you want to invest in the sector and the and the way for, for you to go out and do this, is why mutual fund only and uh, you should take a slow approach and that's why the best approach for building wealth in mutual funds is to do SIP. So yes, uh, we do expect it to do uh, well. What will happen to entry level cars is this SUV or premium segment surge or cyclical trends. See, the there are still uses for smaller cars. You're still seeing smaller cars on the road. People 
is if you see our uh, income chart our household income chart it's like this right so people go from here to here to here to here so there will always be people here right there who who be somewhere in this layer who would also have aspirations to buy a car so there will be users for every segment that comes in it's not going to go it's not going to shift completely like i said there would be users for each and every segment that comes in startups versus big incumbents in the ev space any thoughts see who were startups uh, had the first move advantage they became big right now the uh, environment for startups is weak now with the market uh, doing extremely well that demand has sort of come back you're seeing ipos coming in you are seeing uh, uh, excessive valuations that are there so uh, ev space requires a lot of research and development and always money has to be committed in a large way right so always like i said there was one part where i said bigger better right so the bigger players always have this advantage to commit to money and create new technologies they might be small uh, they can get acquired but that's not a risk that you can play not every startup gets acquired not every uh, uh, not every part of technology works what we are seeing is something that they've had success in what we have not seen is the failures that have been there in the industry where a lot of money has sort of gone a lot of effort has gone what we are seeing is the end result but we are not seeing how difficult it is uh, yeah for a for a, a bigger player to also commit that sort of money what we are seeing is a car but uh, this car is taking you from point a to point b safely right you are comfortably going and that has developed over multiple years 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 of, of uh, development and research Please do type in any question that you have. It can be global. Uh, we do track global auto also. Uh, we track domestic and global. So any question that you have, I'm very very happy to address it. So for those of you who are not on the MQW program, do get in touch with us. Uh, do reach out to us. Uh, let me just put in that number. Yeah. Do reach out to us. We will guide you uh, <clears throat> in your investments. See, the point is, this is not uh, uh, the, the, this is not a buy call or a sell call, right? This is information that. Uh, uh, we thought that yes uh, we are already uh, you know we already have an in-house pms that where we are looking at a lot of data uh, so it's just a part of our investor education program where we are giving out good data where we want investors to, to keep getting smarter and in turn guide them on how uh, best they can use this data in their wealth creation journey right so uh, uh, if you are interested definitely get onto the program and we'll guide you as to when what and how okay what's happening with european auto companies uh europe demand is uh not very strong it's very weak and uh, if you see other players in the value chain who are a part of uh, auto manufacturing their commentary has come in saying that europe is quite negative that the demand coming in from europe is very negative and that entire country is going through a very bad phase so uh, if at all india does get an opportunity to to have access or to invest in european companies uh, again that would be a very good uh, uh, interesting webinar to do of how to look at european auto companies
lot of news recently about Volkswagen Audi. Uh, Volkswagen and Audi, fun fact, Volkswagen, uh, Audi oh, uh, is owned by Volkswagen. So uh, 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 you can go to one of their presentations. They would have a very big chart on how uh, and, and which which brands do they own. Right. So yes, uh, we, they have very, very good brands. And uh, if we are able to get them uh, at a good valuation, then yes, it, 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 we, it, it's a very good idea for anybody to look at. But right now, European auto companies in general, Europe is going through a very bad phase. And EV space related to China, uh, China is leading the pact with EV sales in the world. Uh, the chip issue that affected us uh, uh, did not affect them. Uh, they are doing ind indigenous chip making and uh, auto uh, chips that are being used are more uh, mature nodes which is more older, which means that there are not many that are there. So you have to put more capacity. You have to get uh, uh, again. The process is very large, so they've been able to do that. And that is why you're seeing uh, them leading the forefront in EV. Nowadays, people like to travel uh, and have individual vehicle. Very few people travel by bus. What about uh, bus and trains? Uh, yes, India is a very aspirational country. And uh, we are the only country that is giving you that growth, which means we are having growth everywhere. So as and when we uh, start making more, uh, we will start meeting our aspirations. And uh, naturally, you would have more people wanting to buy a car. And I want to go on my own. Uh, I want to have a vehicle. And uh, generationally, we have, we have seen this as a, uh, you know, a status, as a symbol of status. Okay. So yes, that trend has been there. That trend will continue. People are very aspirational. How the CV sales in India been in the near future? CV sales have been very good uh, last year. Uh, right now, like I said, the risks that we foresee are more uh, weak rural demand also. So we will have to see how uh, CV sales have come up to be in the future. What is the effect of this entire? El Nino that has happened. What are the effects of uh, global scenarios that have played out that are affecting uh, TV sales and CV sales? Uh, so definitely uh, it is data that will keep coming to you. Right now, yes, there is some bit of uh, uh, faltering. There, there is a bit of change, but uh, there, there was a good year also that came in. So we will have to see now what's happening. Right. I don't think we have any more questions, but if you are not on the program, do get in touch with us. Uh, we would be able to guide you uh, in your investment journey. Uh, and uh, these are good data points that we will keep doing. These are uh, presentations that we will do. The next presentation that's lined up is more on the large cap investing side. So do attend that. Uh, put in a registration. It's all on social media. Uh, so thank you guys for uh, spending time with me. I hope to see you very soon. Thank you so much.